Good morning to everyone. So good to see all of you here this morning, and it is especially good for all visitors that are here. You're very welcome. Please come back soon. There are two notes I wanted to read uh, this morning. One is from Ruby Poole. It says, thank you so much for the prayers, cards, calls, and visits during Harold Reinhardt's illness and at his passing. I truly appreciate all of them, especially the Women's Guild, remembering me. Also, we have a card this morning from the Lashley family. It says a special thank you. Every kindness has a part in bringing joy to someone's heart. It's sometimes easy to forget that there are nice people out there doing nice things for others. Thanks for being such a special reminder. It says thanks so much for everyone's help. And that's Joyce, Jack, and family. And they appreciate the, um, their bereavement time that the folks in the church were there to help them out. Really do appreciate it much. They wanted me to convey that to you folks. <clears throat> in our prayer list today, we have uh, Pastor Kevin Gilliam. We want to remember him. He's having a problem with his eyesight. I think he's almost completely lost his eyesight. So let's pray for him and pray for him to have strength and that the Spirit will help him in any way that he needs it. Also, I found out uh, just a little bit ago that Billy Gilmore had surgery early this morning. I think that he's okay. I think it went quickly, and I believe it was his gallbladder, but I'm not positive about that. So keep Billy in your prayers. Carolyn Heilig, we want to keep her in our prayers. Todd McNeely, Sharon Goodson. If you will, remember Sue Archer's brother, Ronnie Boger, as he is waiting for a transplant, and we pray that that becomes available in the very near future for him. Uh, also in our prayers this week, Donna Rummage's brother-in-law, Tim Petrus, and uh, also I think Johnny Brown had a touch of the cold like I've had this week, so keep Johnny in your prayers. He seems to be doing better this morning. He's here, so that's great. We have a congregational meeting following the service. Please, all members do stay for that. It's important. We're voting on consistory members, the budget, and the parking lot. Uh, youth meeting will be today at 4. We will not be going after church today to visit the shut-ins. Obviously, I have no business being around the shut-ins right now. So we're going to postpone that. We will be going the youth will, but we're not going today. But we do have youth meeting at 4. Tuesday's prayer group at 10. Wednesday, we have choir practice at 7. Next Sunday is our Christmas cantata at the 11 o'clock service. Please plan to be here. There also is a consistory meeting next Sunday at 11, after the 11 o'clock service. And anybody that is voted on to consistory today, please be here for that meeting next Sunday. Toys for Tots collection box is in the education building. Poins, that is. The deadline is next Sunday. They're $9 each if you'd like to have one. Yes, and Martha? Okay, the deadline for the Toys for Tots is December the 18th, okay? Thank you. And uh, there also is the Oregon Food Pantry collection boxes in the Education Building, if you can bring some canned goods to put in there. There's a list, I think, in the bulletin that has things that they would uh, could use. On Sunday, December the 18th, we will have the Youth Christmas Play. Also, on Sunday, December the 18th, please mark your calendars that at 9.45 a.m. during the Sunday school hour, the men will be giving us our annual Christmas breakfast. So everybody try to be here at 9.45 for that breakfast on the 18th. That's two weeks from today. Mark your calendars also that Saturday, December the 24th, the Christmas Eve service will be at 7 o'clock in the evening. The next day is Christmas Day, which is Sunday, December 25th. We will have the 9 o'clock service. We will also have Sunday school at 945, and we'll also have uh, the church service at 11 o'clock. So there are three church services in less than 24 hours. I hope one of them will definitely work into your schedule, and if you want to come for a multiple, of course, that's fine as well. Are there any other announcements this morning? Um, good morning. I wanted to uh, let you guys, or just a reminder that um, the 18th is the last day for donations for the shut-ins for the Women's Guild's baskets that they're doing, as well as the hats and coats 
gloves, things like that for the children. If you have any donations of gently used or new coats or gloves and hats, um, you can bring them and put them in the orange Sunday school classroom at the, yes ma'am. Oh, there's a box, I'm sorry, I didn't realize there was a box. So there's a box out there for that. Um, and I wanted to let you know that we didn't get it in the bulletin, but we are gonna do the love tree dedications. You can give your, your in memory or in honor of, to me or Jeannie Bost, um, we'll be glad to take that for you and put your candle on the love tree and the proceeds go to the general fund and it can be used for the parking lot or whatever's necessary for the church. Are there any other announcements at this time? If there are not, if you would please stand to sing our opening hymn. We're using the green, green hymnal this morning. It's 251. It came upon the midnight clear. Let us continue with our call to worship found in the bulletin. Lift up your hearts, people of God. For him who has been redeemed us with the blood of the Son. God is raising up a mighty Savior. From the root of Jacob. God is revealing the mercy he promised Abraham and Sarah. The same mercy he promised to you. 
We await this revelation in Bethlehem. Come, let us worship God. Seated, we will now have the lighting of our Advent candles. The first candle on the Advent wreath symbolizes hope and is called the prophet's candle. The prophets of the Old Testament, especially Isaiah, waited 750 years in hope for the Messiah's arrival. The second candle, also purple, represents peace. It is called the Bethlehem candle as a reminder of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. It symbolizes the preparations being made to receive and cradle the Christ child. Bethlehem is a story about a humble couple on an unwanted journey at an inconvenient time to visit a tiny, insignificant town. Its only claim was that David had been born there a thousand years before. But this sleepy town was destined for something great, so said the prophet Micaiah some 800 years before. Augustus Caesar was ruling the part of the world, and he called for a census to be taken. But God was in charge, for he used Caesar's edict to move Mary and Joseph 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem to fulfill his word. Even though there was no room for Mary and Joseph in the inn, God had orchestrated these events. Mary and Joseph had to leave Nazareth so they could register in Bethlehem and the scripture be fulfilled. Micaiah 5.2, But you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, Though you are among the smallest towns in the nation of Judea, the Lord will choose one of your people to rule the nation, someone whose family goes back to ancient times. When Mary said, May it be done to me according to your word, Luke 1.38, it meant that from then on her life would be part of the fulfillment of the divine prophecy. God had promised that the Savior would be a Jew from the tribe of Judea and the family of David, born of a virgin in Bethlehem, the city of David. All of this occurred just as the scripture said, and Caesar unknowingly played an important role. Bethlehem was the smallest clan of Judea. It is a very insignificant town just outside of Jerusalem. Yet God did not choose Jerusalem for the birthplace of the Messiah. God loved the world so much that he chose a tiny, insignificant town as the location for the birth of the one who literally changed the world. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are ordinary, common, and unremarkable like the Bethlehem of old. We invite you into our hearts this day. Come to us anew and fill us with your presence. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
If you will, please stand for our prayer of confession. <clears throat> o Lord of mercy, who receives the humble, we ask for honesty to accept responsibility for our sins. We ask for courage to make our confessions, to seek your forgiveness for our offenses, and to extend the same forgiveness to others that you extend to us. May we have the grace to submit our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ for all our sins, O oh Lord. We beg your forgiveness. Amen. Let us continue by reciting the Apostles' Creed in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. <coughs> Hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us gather our gifts together and give them as an offering to our most generous Father. Let our offering be our thanksgiving for the mercy, goodness, and ever faithfulness of God. We will sing What Child Is This while the offering is collected this morning. Please rise.
merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, there is a young person here. Great. Jacob, would you like to come up? Are there any others? <laughs> uh -uh. Okay. How you doing today, Jacob? Today, we're in a season of the church here where the color on the lectern and the pulpit and the altar are purple. That's because it's a time of preparation for us. Have you ever gotten ready to do something? Like maybe this morning, did you get ready to do something? <laughs> you slept like that last night with your shoes on? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't think so. So you put your shoes on and your suspenders and your shirt and your pants and got ready to come to church, didn't you? So a lot of times in life, we do things to get ready for something else going to happen, don't we? Now, is there something that you do maybe all year long getting ready for a particular event? Who's going to come to town soon? Santa Claus. That's right, Santa Claus. Well, I hope all year long you've been preparing for that. Have you been a good boy all year long? <laughs> you you just you just got a brownie point with Santa Claus. You told the truth. That's good. Well, I hope you've been a good boy most of the time during the year. I think you probably have. So you've been preparing for Santa Claus to come at Christmas, but even more important at Christmas, you're getting a bow. That's great. Well, I'm glad you've been as good as you have. So you've been preparing for that, but we're also right now at this time in the church here preparing for baby who to be born. Whose birthday is on Christmas? Baby? Jesus. You got it. You know your Bible, don't you? That's right. So just be sure that as you're preparing for Santa Claus to come, that you're preparing for baby Jesus to come too so that you'll be happy when that night gets here, okay? All right, let's have a prayer, Jacob. Father in heaven, we do praise you for these young people. We praise you for the fact that all the young people in the world Bring joy to our hearts, and Lord, we ask that you keep them safe, especially keep them safe in their schools, Lord. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. And my own school is decorated. It's decorated your school. That's great. I'm not sure. I think we're having children's church with Miss Terry this morning. Do you want to carry the basket today? I'll let you do that. We will continue with our congregational prayer at this time. If you have any prayer requests other than those that were made during the announcements, if you'd like to make them known, please do so at this time. Or thanksgivings for something that happened this past week that you want to. Are there any? Yes, we had a number of folks this week that worked with first responders. I think it was uh, two policemen and one, uh, one fireman as well that were shot. Fortunately, uh, it was not life-threatening. So we pray for them. And also, there were two children that were lost in a house fire in Salisbury this past week. So we want to remember their families. Are there any other prayers or thanksgivings? Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer then. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. 
God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians. Inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with peace and serve the common good. God judges lawmakers and public officials to protect the rights of all. We especially ask you today to be with our sisters and brothers in Ukraine. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are abused, especially children and elders. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter. Lay your healing hand on those we have named, those suffering with COVID and those in our congregation. Angie, Brent, Cindy, Richard, Abbas, Barbara, Delana, Jim, Wayne, Carol, Annie Sue, Sonny, Carolyn, Martha, Calvin, Shelby, Joyce, Ruby, Chris, Joni, Roger, and Sharon. We urge your people to welcome one another as we have been welcomed by you, Lord. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. You embrace all who have died trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in our hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. We pray these things in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our scripture readings today, first one comes from Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the girdle of his waist and faithfulness the girdle of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and bear shall feed together. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The suckling child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all of my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And that day the root of Jesse shall stand as an ensign to the peoples. Him shall the nations seek, and his dwellings shall be glorious. Our next scripture today comes from Romans 15, 4 through 13. For whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, 
that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to conform the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore I will praise thee among the Gentiles, and sing to thy name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And further, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, who will rise to rule the Gentiles. To him shall the Gentile hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Our final scripture today comes from St. Matthew, the third chapter. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about Jordan. And those that came were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. And John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Here ends our scripture for today. If you would, please stand and let us sing the Gloria Patria together. You may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The reading that I just gave to you this morning from the book of St. Matthew was about a time in the history of the world when preparation was being made. Now, as I'm going through this and as you were listening this morning, you probably realized that at the time that John the Baptist was preaching, he, of course, was already grown, approximately 30 years old, and our Lord was already grown as well. So this is after the birth of Christ. But John the Baptist was in the wilderness proclaiming the coming Messiah. Now, the fact was that the Messiah had already been born into the world. But most folks did not know that. And that was why God had sent John the Baptist to the wilderness to proclaim the fact that the Messiah was about to appear. Now, 2,000 years later today when we're reading this, we can definitely draw an easy parallel between that time period right before Jesus began his ministry and the time period that we are in right now in the church here, which of course is Advent. We also in our, are in a time of preparation, a time when we are preparing for the Messiah to come. Now there of course is a difference. There are several differences in fact. First off, we're on the other side of Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. We've got a lot more information than the folks that were coming to hear John the Baptist in the wilderness preach at that time. 
We're fortunate that all of us were raised in Christian families and that we do know all about Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, the Jewish people of John the Baptist's day had gotten a little bit confused because it had been a good many years, 4,000 years since the Messiah had first been prophesied about. And with time, it had gotten a little bit blurry for them, probably due to the fact that the devil is always trying to blur the eyes of God's people. And so John the Baptist was called right before Jesus came to begin his ministry to call the people of Israel to the fact of what was going on in the world. But today, that, as I have said, is equally important to us. It is a definite parallel with what we are experiencing in this Advent season. In the beginning, remember that what John is saying in the wilderness is broken down into two parts. Number one, your life is a mess. It is all tangled up. Now, this time of year, we've got something that is a very good analogy with our life being in a mess and tangled up and we can't get it figured out. And that is, I think most of you have experienced this at some time or another in December. Think of a great big ball about this big around of Christmas lights, strings of Christmas lights that somebody did not put away in a orderly manner last year after Christmas. And they're all mixed up together and you're trying to pull them apart and it is truly a mess. Now what John the Baptist was saying to these people that came to hear him preach in the wilderness is, to begin with, he wanted them to understand that their lives were like this big ball of tangled up Christmas lights. The fact is that today that same message is pertinent to us here in Rowan County in 2022. Just as those poor folks' lives were a mess, so are ours as we enter this Advent season. John the Baptist wanted to be sure that he pointed out to these folks and to us today that this is our situation and like that big mess, it's all but hopeless. We can't fix this problem ourselves. And John was stressing that to the people who came to the River Jordan to hear him preach in the wilderness. Just as they couldn't fix the problem, so we can't fix the problem. But John did not leave it there. Thanks be to Christ. John's second part of the message was very clear. And that was to say, you need to understand in the first part that you have a problem you cannot fix. You need to admit to the fact that your life is full of sin and you can't fix it. And then after you admit that, you need to refocus your life. Your life has been focused on this mess that you've made of it. Now it's time to turn course. From this point forward, let's all focus on God. Now that was the message of John the Baptist in the wilderness 2,000 years ago to these people as they came out. He first began preaching a small group heard and then they went back into the towns and cities of Judea and other people heard and came. And with time, folks pretty well beaten path out into the desert to where John the Baptist was preaching. Understand again that today this is where we're finding ourselves as well in this Advent season. We also are preparing for the Messiah to come, but what we're preparing is our annual celebration of the Messiah being born. God being born among us. Born into this world among us. The creator of the universe coming here to be with us. We are preparing for that celebration on December the 24th and 25th. As we are doing so, we would be very wise to follow what John is saying to these folks 2,000 years ago. Basically, 
It's take your eyes off of this life and this world. Admit that you're in a hopeless mess, that you can't fix it, and turn to God. Now, as John continues to preach that day, it's very interesting that he makes a distinction between two very different elements, and those would be water and fire. And I think this is important for us as we're reflecting on what John said that day, preparing those folks for the coming Lord. For us to make this distinction as well that John made between fire and water. In the verse, John talks about that people are coming out to see John the Baptist. They are coming. They are listening to him preach. <coughs> They are responding to his preaching by looking in their hearts. They're seeing that what this man is saying is true. They do have a jumbled up mess. And then they're confessing their sins. <coughs> they're also confessing their hopelessness. Excuse me for one moment. And after they are confessing, they're being baptized with water <coughs> from the River Jordan. John baptizes with water. <coughs> but he makes it clear that there is someone coming that is much greater than him. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. And that the one that is greater than him will baptize with the Spirit. <coughs> As we focus on Jesus coming into this world, <coughs> let us realize that what John used was an earthly element that only provided temporary cleansing. But that what Jesus brings... <coughs> is the Holy Spirit, and that in bringing the Spirit, he brings eternal love and life, which is everlasting. As we prepare through this Advent season for the coming Christ child, untangle that bundle of Christmas lights that your life is, <coughs> and prepare yourself for the gift of eternal life that our Lord Jesus brings at his birth. Amen. <coughs> Let us continue with our closing hymn in the Green Hymn Book 262, Away in a Manger. <coughs> 